far ahead. I originally wasn't going to go today because there was warnings on the um, the Queensland fire bushfire website, government website, but main roads, Queensland roads, said there were no road closures and Google Maps is saying no road closures, so I decided I would still carry on and keep going. So maybe the fire is just, you know, further away from the road and the smoke's blowing away from the road, I don't know, but it doesn't look very good from here and it does make me a little bit nervous, <laughs> but we shall see. So we are stopped here because of the fire. Uh, just talking to another uh, motorist and yeah, she her dad looked on Facebook page and apparently, yes, it's, um, it's the fire that's stopping all the traffic. So it is, it looks a hell of a lot smaller than it did before. Um, but yeah, there's quite a few people now. We've all just stopped our cars, saved our fuel, and we'll just wait it out. I've thought about turning around and going back to Ellie Beach, but you know, Murphy's Law, as soon as I do, they'll open the road. And I, I did ring the roads, um, Queensland roads, before I left because I saw that there was a fire. And they said, no, no, no road closures. So I reckon they must have closed it not long after I rang. <laughs> I don't know if you can see them, but there are like three of those kite birds I was talking about earlier circling where the fire is and uh, yeah so just reiterates what I was saying that they they head towards the fire because that's where the rodents are running from and all the smaller animals that they can eat. You can see the water bombers out there now the helicopters and it does look like that smoke has dissipated quite significantly so I'm going to say yay to the firefighters, I think they might be on top of it. Well, a couple of motorcyclists um, were coming back the other way and they were really nice enough to stop and let us know that the policeman up ahead said they may not get control of that fire until later tonight, so they'd been waiting two hours already. So yeah, I think we're going to turn around and head back to Ellie Beach. Okay, so I run Queensland roads again this morning and they reckon that the road is clear. So we're gonna do take two, attempt two, to get to uh, Cairns all the way today, which is gonna be a long drive, but it's all right, we can do it. Okay, so I can still see a bushfire, uh, but it does seem to be on the other side of the road and I think there were two bushfires yesterday. So um, I'm just looking at these kite birds who are flying really close, they're beautiful. Um, so Queensland Roads have told me it's safe passage through. Mind you, they did tell me that yesterday when it wasn't. So anyway, we're gonna attempt it. My Google Maps is still telling me to take a four hour detour <laughs> inland, which I don't want, I, I just don't want to do. I'd rather stay in Ellie Beach than do that. So uh, I am just following signs to Bowen this morning. And yeah, I'm almost at the fire site location. So let's fingers crossed we can make it through. I did see a black cockatoo this morning. I can hear it. And then I was filling my car up and then he flew straight over me. And that's my spirit bird and sign that the passage is clear. So <laughs> as you can tell. <laughs> so yeah, let's go.
really tired now. <laughs> I had a really bad night's sleep last night. I woke up at 2 a.m. and then for some reason I just couldn't get back to sleep. I don't know why. I had a stressful week at work and there's been a lot of driving. My body's just not feeling great. So I, I just kind of dozed from 2 a.m. So I've still got uh, just under five hours to go in this seven and a half hour drive. And yeah, I think I need to pull over soon, maybe get myself a Powerade or something to try and give me a bit more energy to make it through because I have to get to Cairns today. And you know, drive a revive and stay awake. So yeah, I'm gonna stop and find a bakery or something as well. <laughs> It's very industrial coming into Cairns and I've just driven past something, some processing station, I don't know what it's for, but my God, that may be dry reach. That smell was so bad. I don't know what it was. Um, I'm headed for the beach. So I'm hoping it gets better down at the beach because I'm not feeling it right now. Anyway, we'll see. arrived and uh, it's not quite uh, I, don't know, I don't really have expectations but like when I got to early beach I was like wow but I haven't got that same feeling coming into Cairns I love the weather like I love that muggy weather but I don't know I am really really exhausted after not getting much sleep last night rough week with all the driving and then a lot of driving today but yeah, so I'll see how I feel in the morning. Things might look brighter in the morning when I'm more awake and not so grumpy. <laughs> To admit, when I got to Cairns initially, I was pretty out of whack because um, so I'll just show you the water while I'm here. Not bad. Um, yeah, it was still quite city-like, and it was um, just I wasn't getting the vibe from Cairns City, but I found this beautiful place, <clears throat> Palm Cove, and it's literally like paradise. There are palm trees on the beach. It's just it's very calming here. And yeah, I didn't get, quite get the right energy from being in Cairns. I was feeling really out of whack. So yeah, it's beautiful here. And I'm not sure how long I'll stay. I'll probably only be in Cairns for a couple of weeks. Go a little bit further north. 
Um, then cut, make my way back down, maybe do a bit more snorkeling of the Great Barrier out from um, Early Beach. Yeah, but enjoying myself now. Okay, so I may have today gone and spent about a thousand dollars on diving gear. <laughs> I love snorkeling and I'm doing a snorkel of the Great Barrier Reef in a couple of days and I my I always freeze in the water like um, I am from WA so the water is a lot colder over there but my fingers and my toes go completely white I think it's called Reynolds disease or something anyway so I needed to get a new wetsuit but I also have a bit of claustrophobia so I can't pull things over my head I just physically can't do it anyway so I had been researching this thing called um, shark skin and I have paid a small fortune for it. So I've got the jacket, so I don't have to pull it over my head. I can zip it up, but it's super tight. I've got the hood to go with it because you lose all your heat through your head and the pants. I also got some new fins. I got some booties because we have to make sure we cover all ourselves in the water up here because of the, um, the irukandji, which I think is the same thing as the box jellyfish. And I got myself a new snorkel and mask. So I think I'm going to look like Catwoman. But that's okay. At least I'm going to be warm. I did also get a weight belt with a couple of weights because I find that when I wear a wetsuit, the buoyancy is keeping me from going down too far because I like to like free dive a bit. Um, yeah, so I got the weights, but then the guy at the shop where I bought the wetsuit from, this wetsuit, um, it's a different material. It's not the... Um, got the name of the material the wetsuit material this is like it's lined with fur it's and it's thin and but it has the same heat retention of like a four or five mil wetty so awesome that they don't affect your buoyancy so apparently I won't need the weights belt so I'll see how I go without it and I may just return those um, but I don't use them awesome I have come to a caravan park just to find my bearings here um, because I don't know, I just feel a bit safer in a caravan park here at the moment. Um, yeah, so I'm going to see that, do that for a bit. And yeah, I might do the train ride to the mountains, to the butterflies, do that on the weekend. So yeah, kiss. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you like what you saw, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. If you haven't met me before, my name is Christy. I am an artist and I live, work and travel in my van, Gypsy. I have created a children's book, Search for Ocean Heroes, and it's all about the effects that rubbish has on our marine life. So that's available on my website through Amazon, and also I have other designs on the website too, which just help promote uh, my message of conservation because that's what I'm passionate about. The aim of my YouTube channel is to take you on my adventures with me so that you might fall in love with nature that little bit more and help in turn want to try and protect it. So thanks so much for watching again, See you in the next video.